Next up on the Skybird build here, we're going to use some grain filler and fill the grain of this open poured mahogany. I'm using a random grain filler today, really didn't like it. It was too thick, so I added a little bit of water and that helped a little bit. When it's a little bit more runny, it flows into those open pores. Still was less than ideal. I do like my Wonderfill putty for grain filling more so than with this stuff. The trick is to apply it a couple of times. Sort of let it sit and dry, let it sit and dry, and then come back and sand. With this, since it's such a big body, you just kind of got to go back and forth a couple of times to get this set up right. If it's too watery, it doesn't go in the pores. If it's too thick, it just sort of sits on the top. So a little bit of a sort of balance to get it right. Going to come back with a toothpick and make sure I don't plug the holes that I'm using. And same process for the top as well. Credit card helps sort of pick up the material, move it around a little bit more. Make sure you're getting it in all the pores. And this is tad messy so you're gonna have to come back and scrape the binding again and clean it all up after you do this so I'd say this is one of the messiest parts of working on a mahogany guitar so we'll come back with the sander and sand off the excess material we're using a really high grit here this is 320 Lots of sanding as always to get this right. And then as we got to this point, there was a change in the spec. We wanted to add a toggle switch on that upper bout. So we'll just go ahead and do that routing. Got the pick guard there to make sure it's in the right spot and size. And then we're going to spray once we get this done. We're gonna put a white primer on the front and the back and the neck help fill the open pores of the mahogany. And then we're going to do a test run of the blue and just see how it sticks. And here I can see I've still got some open grain lines so we're going to come back with that putty and fill a couple spots. This is the back and forth to get this right. And even when you do get it right, you still may need to come back and do this. So I'm not using the real heavy Simtex sealer. You know, this guitar is going to be alive and breathing with the finish. I'm gonna sand it down then once we come back with that filler. Again, 320 clean up so you just have some teardrop shape filler all over the body and then this blue pigment it's a white base with a blue pigment and the interesting thing about this is how much the whole garage just gets covered in this stuff we set up sort of a mini spray booth to clean this up and just the blue went everywhere We taped off the control cavity there, and then you can see where I was sanding on the back side. It's a terribly cold winter here for us, and so it takes about a month for nitro to dry, so I'm spraying this with the heater running, trying to get it all set. So once it dried, we then came back, peeled off the tape, scraped the binding again, and get it ready for that final clear coat. A 
lots of prep work in getting the finish down right. And even when you get it down right, you still got some spots that aren't perfect. I felt decently okay doing this with the rattle cans. There's the tape peel on the side. Really beautiful color. Come back and scrape the binding so that top edge needs some love. Only way to do this is with the blue and a razor blade and just scrape. This paint goes on thick. It's heavy and so as you're scraping the binding you gotta be real careful that you don't go too far into the mahogany. A lot of back and forth. If you follow my other videos, you know that we had actually tried to stain the headstock with that piece of ash, and it just didn't look right. It wasn't a perfect match. And so we went ahead and grain filled and painted over that ash. So one day when someone else gets this guitar, if they sand back the headstock, they'll, they'll find a nice piece of ash veneer so scraping very slowly keep that binding right and then once we get the finish all prepped binding all scraped we're going to come back with some stumac nitro rattle can and spray this we do about six coats of nitro this is just one of the coats. Obviously, I don't want to show you all six coats going on. <laughs> Literally watching paint dry. But got the respirator going. I've got the fan blowing out. And just getting the coats on. This was springtime here in Chicago. So then we are going to spray a little into the top and paint the inside of the control cavity sometimes you can see wood still and i don't want any sags so we painted that then i'm going to come back with this asilix dry sanding final sanding sheets goes from 600 up to 1500 and that actually works out really well so we let this dry for about six weeks had a couple recoats we had to do in some spots. And then once that's all dry, we come back with the buffer and buff it out. This is the custom shop built buffer I made years ago. We mounted this into the basement and then we've got a vacuum running to pick up any of the dust on the bottom. I've had some great use with this buffer it's been outside, it's been in the basement, it's been in the garage, it's been all over the place in my shop and this is now sort of the centerpiece of my main corner. That vacuum works pretty well. I don't do a lot of inside buffing. The outside wheel there has, I think, six buffs and then the inside wheel only has three. So I don't really use it all that much. And once it's buffed and dry, we're going to start putting this together. We got the soldering iron to push down the mounts. That way the paint doesn't crack. I was going to do a video standalone on this, and I don't know why I didn't. I don't know if I recorded it and then didn't publish it. This one needs a little bit of assistance to get in. So then once we get the bridge mounts and hardware set up, we're going to level the frets. Make some final adjustments here. Once 
Once they're leveled, we recrown them. So I'm using the Stumac 300 grit diamond file. And then once I get them leveled and recrowned, I'll come back with sandpaper. I stopped using the Stumac fret erasers. I found that the sandpaper on my finger gives me the best results. So that's how I am doing the next these days. Here is the sandpaper on the finger. I feel like I get the best results. So we go from 320 up to 2000. And then once we get to 2000, we come back with a buffering bit and buff out the frets and really has a nice look then. We'll clean up the fretboard, pull off the tape. A razor blade on the fretboard does quick work. And then we will go in video and give you a sound clip. And then I've got a, another full video coming of the final review of this. Finish was a little finicky, but overall the guitar sounds great and plays outstanding. This is the bridge. <laughs> And this, this is the neck. And 